The following program is classified G. It's suitable for all ages. We would like to remind our viewers that the views expressed in this program by our participating guests are solely viewpoints of them who take part and does not reflect the views and beliefs of the Verena Media Network. Welcome to Gen XYZ. We are today joined by two individuals who have been in the arena of sporting for quite some time to give us a certain insight on one would say an aspect that we haven't been paying a lot of attention because sports persons have also been affected largely by the pandemic and the fact that they had to change their routines, change the way that they have continued their training and that has been quite impactful in the way they have planned out their entire year. So we decided to bring together two individuals who are working with these athletes, who is, who is one person who is an athlete herself, uh, who will give us the insight as to exactly what their thought process is and what their plan is. And when the viewers who are at home, who are engaging in these activities could in fact take some form of idea as to what they should be doing as of now. So today we were joined by uh, Mr. Mano Jabe Singh, who is the head uh, coach for swimming at uh, South Asia Games, and Irishani Raj Singh, who is a national level athlete she has represented us at the South Asia Games as well. Uh, so before we get started, I would like to get a little bit of an idea. I think our viewers would also very much like to get an idea of exactly what you two individuals have been doing over the past few days and what you're engaged with as of uh, like right now. So that from that point onwards, we can really contextualize and move forward to understanding how this pandemic has affected in your areas, the swimming and the athletic arenas and how other sporting uh, individuals could also get sort of like and gist. Uh, so if I do uh, start with uh, Mr. Manoj. I believe you have to work with quite a lot of individuals, uh, work with a lot of planning. Mm -hmm. The entire world has been affected by this crisis and uh, it has really affected scheduling as of like a very a pertinent issue. And then if you talk about athletes motivation, which is sort of like the driving force, that is a entire another arena itself. So how are you handling this? And if you could give us an introduction as to what you're working on right now. Well, um, if you take the, the um, the highest level of competition there is, which is Olympic Games, uh, which was supposed to be held in July and August this year. It has been postponed to next year, uh, pending the how this uh, pandemic plays out. Um, having said that, those people who are directly involved with swimming and to represent Sri Lanka at, uh, at Olympics Games, I think they have been impacted in a very bad way. Uh, but as far as swimming goes in Sri Lanka, it is at a complete standstill. The last practice that we had was uh, in, in March, I believe March 9th. So they have had an extensive break and I've been coaching for almost 25 years now and I have never encountered this. So it's all new how we go about doing things. So we're doing stuff where they can, um, we, we know that we can't get into a pool for a while. But uh, there are other things that we can do that, uh, uh, that is being done at home. But the thing is, there is no supervision. There is no way for us to monitor whether it's being done correctly. Um, but I think the older generation athletes, I mean, people who are um, mature, uh, they probably can manage something like that. But swimming is uh, in, a, in a very bad place right now. Mm -hmm. On that note, if you move to Irashani, I think uh, you Personally, you are also training for some competition. You also might have had, you know, certain targets in mind for this year, for the next year as well. Uh, given your sport, given what you're doing right now, if you could give us a brief introduction as to what you are doing and how you have really like uh, entered and understood the kind the current situation. Um, so it's been almost two months since we stopped running, mm -hmm. since the grounds were closed, and um, unlike swimming, you know, we actually can get into the road and start running but uh, considering the safety issues so we all decided to stay at home um, and personally I have a very small area to train because I live in an apartment and I do train in my balcony so I'm very limited with the space that I have um, but uh, thank God uh, my coach is actually um, is very understanding so he first got me to show me around the house so he could find a place for me to train and then he made this um, workout accordingly. Um, so there are, with my coach, there are about eight athletes who get eight different workouts because we live in eight different places. 
Um, so that being said, um, I think it's not about where um, where we find what we can't do. Instead, focus on what we can do the best way we can. Um, um, like he mentioned, uh, there's no supervision, but it's 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 honestly in the uh, hands of the athlete as well. So if I maybe uh, cheat on my workout, it's at the end of the day, it's uh, I'm the loser, right? Mm -hmm. um, so. Me, I have I have been um, working uh, really hard as much as I could, and I always keep contacts with my coach. Um, and I think I've been blessed with this time, so I could focus on my um, uh, basic fitness that I've been injured for quite some time. So I take this as a blessing where I could actually work on my uh, fitness level. Mm -hmm. On that note, if we uh, move back to uh, Mr. Manoj, um, I think you gave us a general gist as to the current situation that is being faced. Uh, if we really like take this program to a place where now, since we are looking at a time period where we could lift curfew, where we could go back to sort of like a new normal, uh, what is your first like firm advice that you give to people that engage in swimming in like all levels of all tiers, and you engage in like the the high, the most professional athletes that engage with Olympic level sort of competition. Oh, what is the most pertinent advice that you give for people that are at home who are watching, who, have, who are facing a similar sort of crisis, who may not have that kind of uh, attention on them as well? They would also feel lost. They would also, this two month period would mean a big huge loss when it comes to an athlete, given the kind of seconds that are important to them in their, in their, in their sport. Uh, what's your take on that? What is the first firm thing that you'd like to mention? The first thing that I would like to say would be um, your health is the number one number one priority right now. Uh, sport must come second. Uh, that's why they they postponed the Olympics. You know, uh, there might have, might have been these Olympics might have been the um, last episode of a athlete's career, and it being postponed for one year, they may may prevent them from completing their career the way they wanted to, but they have taken that because at the end of the day, uh, it's a pandemic and it spreads like wildfire. And first thing that you must do is you must make sure that um, you're safe and that you're not contributing to the spread of this virus. And that you are, if you can do workouts, then it must be done according to the guidelines that are provided by the health authorities you know, the social distancing and so on and so forth. Uh, if you can't do that, then you shouldn't. Mm -hmm. On, if I throw a uh, similar question to Reshani as well, uh, since the, you had some form of you know, virtual assistance that was given to you during your careers and during these past few two uh, months as well, for another athlete who's younger to you, who's engaging in, in the tier that you also had to undergo in order right. to get to this stage, in order to compete at this level, they would also feel lost. They would also have, would like to find some form of direction as well. On a, as an introductory sort of advice, what would you tell them? What would you, where should they go in order to get their advice? What should they believe in as of now? What should their thought process be? Um, I think uh, nowadays everybody has a smartphone, so it's quite easy for them to contact their coaches. But if they can't, I think it's best to stick to what you know how to do and what you can easily do rather than trying out new things that might actually injure you. Um, so uh, stay in your comfort zone, stay healthy, stay at home, and uh, maybe try uh, trying out, again, go back to the basics and keeping your, like maintaining your level. So um, here's the thing, everybody's at home these days, um, not only Sri Lankans, every athlete is at home. Um, so they're trying to just maintain what they can. Um, so our stamina goes down, our speed might go down, but there are a few things that we can do to maintain um, what, uh, what we have. So when we go back, we can start step by step rather than um, going back to our full uh, pace. Um, so stick to the basics. There are so many videos out there. There's so many online coaches out there if you don't have one. Um, especially in Singhalese, uh, trust me, within this time, there are so many people who started uh, um, home workouts and who started sharing what they know. So I think it's a great opportunity for them to um, browse those and get to know what to do and start with the basics and uh, make sure you keep your fitness level so when you do start, uh, you don't have to start from the bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, if I just uh, continue and we'll go for a short break as well. Uh, Irishani, uh, 
how 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 effective has it been for you during the cup like what what has your thought process been personally when you had to get this virtual assistance over a certain period of time what will be your like number one priority once the uh, curve is lifted or how do you prepare yourself for that moment um so like i said i've been really enjoying staying at home and uh, doing the home workouts because uh, so many things that i missed out um i'm basically catching up on uh, when it comes to fitness uh the things that the extra things that i couldn't do when i was training full time um i'm working on them and talking to uh, coach through the phone uh, well it hasn't been easy because he speaks spanish mm -hmm. um but we do have uh, google translate so that's how we've been talking and then he's been teaching me um new exercises through video call um so he is not um actually giving a uh, new things to do he wants me us to maintain so when we actually do go out um because i do hurdles um it's not um the same thing as 100 meters where you can just get onto the track and run so when you go back to the track you have to start again from the beginning to make sure that our ankles are okay to go over a hurdle and all that so when we do go back um i think he's ready to start slow because um we haven't been given a um the competition schedule yet so uh we might have some time to start slow and get back into the track but i think it's important to know that um we we should know that we are not at the same level of fitness that we were when we went into um the quarantine mm -hmm. so when we go back out we ne we need to know where our place is like uh, where the fitness level level is yeah on that note we'll take a very short break given that we got a very good introduction as to where we are right now what these athletes are undergoing we have to talk about how we can move out of this crisis and how we can move back to a novel sort of society a novel sort of process through which we can begin all this uh, time that we have spent within our homes protecting ourselves on that note we'll take a very short break stay with us this is on your gen xyz back on gen xyz um going back to mr manoj i think uh, you make a good point as also about how uh, this sort of situation has not been faced by anyone before uh, and particularly as you say not in uh, this generation uh, what exactly do you give as sort of uh, given that their mental state that i want to really like spend some time on this as well uh, since that is a huge portion of an athlete's life as well um uh, they most people would find themselves to be lost which is kind of like the point i was trying to make before so uh dealing with at least that you work with on a daily basis what is the advice that you have been giving them uh in terms of this being stalling and how have you understood this entire situation as well is there any scenario that you could draw and mention okay this is similar to this kind of uh, situation this is how we should address it or you know how has it been working with athletes no uh, i have never faced this situation and i don't believe uh as as i told you in this generation no one would have uh, faced something like this probably maybe world war 1 or world war 2 would have been where um the sporting calendar has been put on hold and um, and and then people having to miss or for instance uh, in 1980 i believe uh, when the uh, us and um and um, some other countries boycotted the uh, moscow olympics so other than uh, anything uh, other than for political reasons as a whole the entire world has not faced a situation like this for at least now more than 60 years um what i do is you now uh, when i when i work with my athletes um they do the um, structured workouts at home things that are that they are familiar with uh, we are not doing anything new and it's also it needs to be things that uh they don't have the equipment that's available in the gym so it needs to be with what what everyone has um and uh, twice a week we meet on um on one of these uh, social not social media one of the these apps that we use yeah and uh, yesterday just yesterday i was talking to them about you know uh, you are in a situation where you're trying to keep your focus on goals that are supposed to be happening in the water and you haven't got into 
into the water in the last two months or so, how do you maintain your, your focus and your enthusiasm and your, uh, how do you stay positive? And I decided that, um, that we are going to get uh, uh, sports psychologists involved because that's a specialist area that coaches usually do not have uh, uh, enough sufficient knowledge uh, involved and have a group meeting and so that, that that person can probably give pointers as to how to maintain uh, enthusiasm, how to maintain, how to stay goal oriented, uh, how to stay focused on what you need to do because just like this is happening now, we know one day it'll end. And when, when that time comes, when it's time to start training again, uh, we want to be ahead of the curve. We, want to, we do not want to start at zero. Mm. We, want to st um, we understand that we will not be, um, it will not be a normal season. It will not be, will not be beginning the season in the normal way. But uh, we want to use this time to, one thing that I have seen, um, the Sri Lankan athlete, when you compare to, to now I have, I have coached in the US for quite some time. Uh, when I compare them, they, they're not a very good student of the sport. Uh, they don't know too much about the history of swimming or uh, what has happened, the milestones that have happened over the years. So a lot of people are finding the time now because uh, in normal training times you have six hours of school, you have about two hours training in the morning, another two hours in the evening, and then you have in between maybe three or four hours of tuition. So they hardly have enough time to just have some time for themselves. So even though these are challenging, but it opens up our eyes to other areas that, that might help the athlete um, to, to renew their, their enthusiasm and their, renew their goals or whatever. I think um, as things have been taken away from us because of this pandemic, it has opened other doors that have remained closed in the past. Mm -hmm. So it's a very novel area for us. Mm -hmm. uh, if I take that similar discussion to Irishani as well, uh, what, what about you? Did you did you think that this this time period has had that sort of uh, influence on you? Did you have some form of uh, time that you wouldn't have had generally because schedules must be extremely strict, extremely you know tiring as well for your students that are working with athletes? What are the new experiences that you had once you went into this pandemic? Because as uh, Ms. Manoj mentions, also it's a novel experience for everybody. Uh, what are your thoughts? On this? Um, yeah, so I've never gone through something like this before. I didn't even think it would last this long. Um, so when we went in, um, for a few days I was quite scared because it was spreading so much and there was so much negativity in, on social media. And um, I was advised to get off social media for some time and focus on training, uh, which really helped. Um, I think it's about perspective. If you start focusing on what's happening and how it's going down, um, that could really affect our um, uh, mentality and our attitudes and that's gonna um, change the way that we train. Um, so uh, there are two ways that one thought could go. It, you could either take the positive way or the negative way. So it's with everything that's happening, I think it's very easy to go down the negative way. Um, so change the perspective on how, uh, what, uh, what's happening around. So um, taking this, I took this as extra time, uh, time to train for our competitions instead of um, lacking time uh, because this is our season right now. Yeah, Irishan, if you could give us a certain idea of like the kind of competitions that you all were planning on having. and um, So we were going to have our Olympic selections in April. Um, even if we were, so I have one second um, gap between the standard they want and the timing that I run now. So even if I was not going to get selected, um, what my coach said was let's go for the best timing you can. So we could keep on going to the next level. Um, so my target was the Asian Championships. Also, they, um, they made sure um, that we knew um, the April Olympic trials was going to be the selection for um, other Open Championships as well. So we were quite um, targeting those. But when they said um, it's all cancelled um, and we had to stay at home, um, I was um, upset, but also quite happy because I had more. So now that I'm getting more time to train on my physique, um, also uh, I think it's uh, the the fact that I have less um, access to junk food mm -hmm. and stay at home. I think that's uh, working quite positive on my side. Um, uh, talking about the mentality on what's going on, um, 
So I have been off the track for one year because I had a um, long-term injury. And when I came back to the track, I had to start step by step. So this is, I'm trying to relate that experience with this. So um, because um, I had to bed rest for some time. Um, so at that time, my mentality was all about giving up and focusing on studies and all that. So I'm actually using that experience to this so that I don't go down that road again. Uh, I think it's been good so far. And uh, when we go back, uh, I believe that this rest will um, be beneficial for everybody because we've been training so hard for so many years that this will be like a refreshed start. Mm -hmm. um, taking those thoughts into mind as well, uh, Mr. Manoj, uh, I come back to you and I want to, I think you touched on a very interesting area about how the differences between athletes within our country and you know, athletes uh, abroad as well. Uh, given your experiences within uh, this time period, what do you think the reception has been like for our athletes and how do you think uh, we will be heading forward, heading towards uh, a post-pandemic sort of uh, society, a society where you know, we take this experience forward? Um, do you think we will have a better output? Do you think we'll have more? Or is it something that we cannot predict as of now? Is it something that has only drawbacks? So are there certain things that you really think really enhance these athletes during this time period? Um, I think one of the main things that will come out of this is uh, accountability. Uh, because I told you we are doing workouts, we have been doing that for, I mean, we have not been idle just because uh, this happened, but uh, uh, we were training for South Asian Games. Um, and then um, before we, our season would have ended in April with nationals. Um, so we took a two week break and we took it early because we knew that nationals wasn't gonna happen. But since then we have been at it and we've been doing it. So, uh, the, the athlete understands now, uh, probably better understands now, uh, that what they bring to the table in, in terms of how they approach their workouts and uh, intensity and their attention to detail, uh, recovery and so on and so forth. Um, it, is, it is on them now. You know, uh, the coaches aren't there to watch what they do and whether they go to sleep on time. So, uh, and then you know, um, I never have had the opportunity to uh, talk about sports with my swimmers like this because we never had the time, you know. Um, as soon as practice over, they must rush to school. And then from there, they go to a tuition class. We don't have the time to take a two hour, two hour window or a 45 minute window or one hour. Now yesterday's meeting, I was supposed to call you, but it went for around 15 minutes. Um, so likewise, so because of that, I think they've become better educated about sports uh, in general and and everything else that goes into these one minute or two minute performances. Um, they have a chance to self-analyze, anal for analyze for themselves and then um, they understand better probably now what they put in. Um, their effort is what's going to make the difference. You know, we as coaches and trainers or f physiotherapists or whatever, we are there to support them, guide them, but the actual work must be done by athletes such as her. Mm -hmm. So I think they understand that better now. All right, uh, I think that's a very good point to really take a very short break. We'll come back and we'll take this discussion further and sort of understand what people could be doing while they're in their homes, what sports persons who have found themselves to be lost and who have some form of confusion as to how they should be moving forward to answer their queries as well. We are, you're on Gen XYZ, stay with us. back on Gen XYZ. Uh, Irishani, I would like to move to you now. Uh, given that Mr. Manoj gave us a picture of what he has been telling us, you know, during this process of coaching, uh, most segments that have been left out, either the, the psychology of an athlete, swimmer, those things have come up and they have become the most important parts in the, uh, during this time because yeah. keeping that driving force, keeping athletes such as yourselves motivated is very important. So uh, on a first-hand sort of experience, could you tell us exactly what your coaches have been telling you? How you have maintained some form of you know motivation to continue from this point on? I don't believe uh, you have fallen back with this sort of crisis coming in. 
how have you maintained that and what is the sort of hopeful message you're taking to the future through this crisis um, uh, so my coaches have been uh, so there are two coaches both are from Cuba um, so my coach has been um, calling me almost every day checking up on me uh, checking whether I am eating right sleeping right if he sees me online past 10 uh, p.m. he'll give me a call and he'll say it's time to get offline and go to bed um, so if I'm not feeling right or if I'm feeling weak or if I'm too sleepy I'll make sure that I tell my coach about it um, and he'll make sure that he'll um, add something fun to the workout or chain the workout or maybe say uh, rest we can do something else tomorrow um, so he's been really flexible with everybody um, also uh, I do have a very supportive crowd of um, friends um, who keep pushing me um, even when I'm feeling lazy and they see me online or something, they're like, um, how come you're not working out right now? Because they know the time of um, uh, my workout. Um, so it's, like I said before, it's all about perspective. Um, rather than focusing on how um, you don't have a gym or you don't have uh, things to work out with, how um, it's about focusing on the improvements that's actually happening, like I don't know, um, and um, I've been focusing on my diet more than before, ever before, and I've been researching on how to get more protein in, now that I don't have um, time to go around and eat from outside because it's easy. Um, so I've been really uh, educating myself on food and also um, new workouts, but um, I always uh, communicate those with my coach so that he'll know what I'm looking at, and then if it's not good, then he'll tell me to stop. Um, so he's really been with me as a friend, um, talking to me and asking whether everything's all right, whether everything at home is okay, so that um, he knows that um, I'll push the rest of the crowd with me. Uh, because I communicate with my coach more than the other athletes, uh, because I am kind of the translator for the whole team. So he's telling me what to tell them so that I could uh, talk to them and get them uh, working out with me. So we have to. He's quite smart. He gets us to send a picture of um, right after the workout, so he knows that we did something. Um, so I think, um, like again, um, it's about perspective, focusing on what you have and what you can do instead of what you can't, uh, because it's not going to be the same thing again. It's going to be quite different when we go back out. Um, so it's about um, being innovative, being creative, and getting your work done instead of going trying to find ways to go back to the same old. Mm -hmm. um, I think if you have that um, positivity in your mind, um, it's going to be better than before. Mm -hmm. uh, so Anunji, if I come back to you on that same line of thought, I believe giving this sort of positive atmosphere, giving this sense of hope to your athletes is something very important. And given the kind of tier you're working with, uh, that becomes probably the most important task that you have as of now. Uh, something I want to ask you is, uh, given long intervals such as this uh, for an athlete, given that even that everyone is in a sort of uh, dissociated sort of state, uh, how, what are the core things that uh, athletes should be worried about or should be concerned about when it comes to getting intervals? Like when there's a long span of time that they, if, for example, if an athlete gets sick or cannot um, be there at practices, uh, there are certain sort of physical sort of manifestations that they should be worried about, that they should be focusing on. So if, as a word of advice to swimmers in particular, if you were to give, what should they be concerned about? What should they be watching out for when it comes to these kind of intervals? Um, for swimmers, uh, I will take swimming. <laughs> the structure or the schedule that your body is used to, you know, getting up at 4 o'clock in the morning by 5 a.m. to be in a pool, sometimes uh, in a cold pool, is not natural. So if you get away from that, when people take breaks for long periods, so I say O levels or A levels in Sri Lanka, it happens. Um, we try to minimize that, but it still happens. The hardest thing is to get back to the rhythm of things. So we, I have said, you know, you don't need to be up at 5 o'clock, but uh, by 5.30 you need to be up. By 6 o'clock you need to be at the, uh, doing your workout. By 7.30 you need to be done. So there is some resemblance of uh, a normal schedule for these guys going forward. Um, but having said that, uh, I think the toughest thing for any one of us would be um, to be cooped up in a house without being able to go anywhere, 
um, in other countries called cabin fever. You know, it happens during winter time and stuff like that. So it's a, a real psychological effect mostly f to, uh, for athletes because they're very uh, gung-ho people. They are very uh, goal-oriented people. They are active people. And to be cooped up in a house without being able to do all of those things, I think that is a very challenging thing. And that is why I wanted to get the, uh, the uh, experts involved in a sports psychologist to come and uh, give them, help them out and give them pointers as to how to best handle the situation like that. And then also to, and they are not, even for a normal person, it's a challenging issue, you know, being cooped up. But these are not normal people. They are very competitive people, engage in sports at national and international levels. Um, also for a normal, normal child even, you know. So we, when we come out of this, we need to make sure that we are, um, we are mentally, we are in a good place. And there are things that coaches can do uh, to help that. So, and, and I've been doing that and I plan to do that until such time we are, we are back to some kind of a normal schedule. Mr. Vanj, if I uh, do ask you, now I think you make a very good point in other countries, this um, the change in seasons, uh, that tends to limit the entire the rhythm, one would say. They don't really have this kind of set sort of climate, as in uh, with minor sort of changes that happens in our country. How do they co cooperate with this? Are you aware of like, the kind of things that they do to keep this rhythm going on, to keep themselves all active, to keep themselves involved in this entire process? Yeah, because they have a lot of... Um, uh, sport infrastructure that is indoors. So even though it's um, you know minus 10 degrees outside, you go to a pool, it's a heated building and a heated pool, or you go to a uh, athletics and stuff, those are the things that, uh, that happens, but then you still have indoor tracks, uh, training venues. So they are better geared mm -hmm. than us uh, to weather something like this. And, and if it's something like some place like China or Russia, uh, they probably will be able to house the athletes in separate uh, venues and uh, keep them away from general population and continue to train. So I always ha I was under the impression that, or I, I always thought that if the Olympics was to happen, um, countries like China and countries like Russia would have been an advantage because they would have found a way to, to train even in spite of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Mm -hmm. And um, but then the general, you know, other countries like uh, the rest of the world who don't have that kind of a uh, political system they would have been um, at a very big disadvantage. So I think going forward, uh, we will not be able to at least to begin the seasons. We will not be able to do things the normal way, like you know, business as usual. We will have to come up with innovative uh, ways of uh, getting to the point where we were before this pandemic started as soon as possible with the minimum amount of disruption to these athletes' careers. Mm -hmm. uh, Yoshani, uh, if I ask, if I were to ask you, given that at one point we do see a post-pandemic sort of situation that occurs here where we can in fact move into at least some form of, uh, given that coronavirus may not leave us in the very near future, we have to learn to live with the kind of condition that is available here and that is common to athletes as well as in, that is the discussion that we have been having. Yeah. Uh, what personally, what do you believe will be your personal goal in moving towards uh, a post-pandemic post situation, what will you start doing the very next day as you get to enter to this, as you get to enter and get to interact with your coaches, get to move out, you know, get, go back to your gyms, go back to the place where you usually practice. What would be your thought process? Where do you think your personal goals will be, uh, personal priority would be, basically? Okay. Um, first thing I'm going to do when I get out is a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so when we do get out, I hope they will come up with a system where not everybody uh, goes into the track at once, where they will team us up and um, let us train and maybe give us a different time um, so that there is social distancing while we train. Um, that being said, we cannot use masks and run all the time. Uh, we do need to train like we used to. Um, so hoping that they would come up with the system soon, which they haven't yet. Um, but I'm pretty sure my coaches have already decided on how to do it because um, they are actually right now, they're looking at different tracks where they could take us. Might be selfish, but they're actually worried about the whole team because we do, um, my, my coach, he's a sprinting coach, he has about eight people and the jumping coach has about another 20. So they've discussed to take us to a different uh, arena so we could train without any uh, problem but uh, thinking other than my 
team. There are so many people who have um, bigger teams. So um, I think it's that it's time to be a bit selfish, also responsible. So there's a fine line between those two, um, where we could discuss and um, divide ourselves on what to do, on uh, like when to do, and go with the coaches. Um, do the things that we did as much as we can, the new way that we can. Um, doesn't mean that we have to always run in a track. If we if we are not allowed to run in the track today, maybe go to a jogging path and run today. Um, so it's about getting the workout in as much as we can, um, uh, rather than thinking um, how come they get the chance and we don't. Sure. Uh, on that note, we'll take a very short break. We're going to go into a more conclusive note on today's program. We have really given the gist of how and what athletes could be doing, what they could focus on. You're on Gen XYZ. Stay with us. Back on Gen XYZ, we are on our conclusive uh, portion of this program. Uh, I start with uh, Manu. So you have been working for quite some time in this industry, and even you say it's a novel experience. It's possibly a very su surprising experience for many others who are in this uh, field. Uh, I want to get your take on exactly what you believe should be done the kind of lessons that we have learned through this entire process and moving ahead, what we can do. People who are engaged in this sport on variety of tiers, what they could, should be believing in right now. If you could take some examples that you have seen uh, of the mindset of athletes as of now and what they must be going through and how you can address those concerns as well. Manoj, on a conclusive note, how do you see this entire situation? I say um, to athletes, I say, um, there is light at the end of the tunnel. And if you have come out of this unscathed without having contracted COVID-19, you're already um, ahead of the curve. And um, there will be, um, there will be a means for you to train, probably not the way you have been training uh, throughout your career, but to begin with, there will be ways for you to train. and. Uh, um, every single athlete is in the same boat, you know, so when you come back, there won't be people who have been uh, training while you have been at home doing nothing. Uh, but then I'm pretty sure, as uh, she said, that the coaches uh, have come up with ways uh, to keep the athletes occupied and engage in the sport, maybe not sport specific or even specific training, but general conditioning and uh, the th things that we do at the beginning of a season anyway. So uh, stay positive. Uh, uh, you have had um, actually a break. If you are injured, it is uh, time for you to, your body to heal. If you are not, then it was time for you to, uh, to concentrate on things that you usually didn't have the time to concentrate on. And hopefully that you have learned things that will make you a better, better um, competitor as we come out of this. And to the coaching community, I would say, uh, one of the most important things that, that uh, you can do is to keep the uh, athletes, your athletes who are under you, uh, on, a, on a positive note and make sure that they're healthy, both mentally and physically, and do as much as possible to keep them, uh, keep their fitness levels up so that when you start, you're, you're not starting at zero. And when you start back up, to make sure that, uh, that you don't forsake the health of the athlete or the, uh, the resp your responsibility to curtail the spread of the virus uh, for the sake of um, again in competition at some future time. Uh, be innovative in your training methods and you know she said she can't run with a mask on. A swimmer can definitely swim with a mask on and uh, if you want to if you want to have training um, training in, in the water uh, if you are training in a pool, we are confined to six to eight lane pools or ten lane pools and there are so many people that you can do. So we had to be very, very innovative when we come back as to how we utilize pool time and how we uh, maximize the effectiveness of the time that you have in the water. So maybe we'll have to look at new things as coaches and, and keep our athletes safe. I think that's the most, most the, our ultimate responsibility is to keep them safe. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, on that note, if uh, I do move to Irishani as well, I think uh, Ms. Manoj puts into context uh, what coaches and athletes should bear in mind, a form of responsibility that they should bear in mind as they move into some sort of understanding this entire health crisis that's happening around us as well. Uh, if you could give us a few thoughts on what exactly your mindset has been, what message you would give to your junior athletes and what are the personal lessons you have learned through this entire pandemic, through this entire scenario? Um, right, so I think the first thing we have to remember is that this virus isn't going anywhere anytime soon. So we need to make sure that we continue what we've been doing, the safety precautions that we've been taking. So just because um, the curfew is lifted doesn't mean we can stop using our masks now. Um, in a time where we are scared to even cough in public, I think it's important that we um, follow all the rules and regulations given by the government, um, especially um, now uh, the curfew was lifted and as soon as that happened all the shops were packed with people so we cannot go back to our usual um, you know panic mode and panic buying um, so we de we do need to maintain uh, um, the discipline that we've been having f uh, this time um, also I think it's important to know that we are all in this together not only Sri Lanka the entire world is in, in this together so I, I think that's a good base to stay positive so if we are running out of um, ideas on how to train with what we have I th um, I'm pretty sure people will start sharing on new ideas which we can use and personalize and use it ourselves um, also um, going back into the track I think it's important that we know we are not as the we are not at at the same fitness level that we were, so start uh, little by little, um, rather than going to the same th uh, example, uh, you cannot live the same weight you lifted right before you went into uh, the curfew. Um, I think it's uh, change your perspective on things and focus on the positive things rather than negative things. I have been resting for, I, I have uh, gone through um, one year's rest before and when I came back I uh, ran the best timing Sri Lanka have ever seen in 14 years so a rest is not as bad as you think you are um, as long as you take it as a good thing and then you use it as a good uh, thing to uh, improve yourself I think that's um, that's how it's gonna affect you so if you do think it's bad then I think that's gonna affect you in a bad way um, so with a positive mind step out and stay safe um, and uh, obey the government. If they say close the grounds tomorrow and go back home, we have to do that mm -hmm. rather than fighting. Um, I think the most important thing is perspective and staying positive. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think we have a bit more time, Ms. Manoj, if I uh, just uh, take that form, form of uh, attention, the kind of idea that uh, uh, she mentioned also. Uh, Ms. Manoj, how do you put into perspective the entire, like, there might be people who have decided to, you know, if since there is an extension to 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 a time period that we are not really like uh, no one really knows of uh, we don't know when our next uh, competition will be we don't know when we can engage on that same level same level of competition people might tend to give up people might tend to you know stop this sort of area people because given that sporting is not equally encouraged equally uh, given this the same form of you know stature in every society uh, what do you would what would you like to give as a message to those kind of people who would you know be really on the fence of where to go ahead given that this crisis is something new and then really not sure where to like invest their time on invest their futures on uh, how have you I'm pretty sure you have had these kind of questions thrown at you also during your time period how have you addressed them in the past and how do you address them in you know the current situation um, what I tell my guys they're already a minority because uh, they're not like the general population. Uh, they already achieve more, uh, like I, I refer to my people as student athletes. You know, uh, now we just came through the uh, O-level examination and I saw there were like 300 people who got nine A's. Uh, but then there's a b big difference between uh, someone getting nine A's, someone who, a student athlete getting nine A's because they don't have the time that they need to fully invest in studies because they're doing two things, which if you want to be good at both, then you need to give, uh, I guess, equal attention to both things. So already you are, you're distinct people, you know, and you're a different caliber. You're not just a run-of-the-mill kind of person. 
So believe in yourself, believe in uh, what you've been doing. Uh, as I told, I said before, you know, this is going to end one day. Um, and when that happens, uh, it is in your best interest to make sure that you are ready mentally and physically um, step out and start, you know, running or swimming or whatever you're doing. Um, it may seem like it's all pointless right now, but uh, it is not. I mean, you, whatever you have been doing, this has not changed it. Mm -hmm. um, coming out of this, be a stronger athlete than uh, the one went into it. Mm -hmm. All right. I think that's a very good note to take our st the stop our discussion for today. I thank you, Rajat Raj Singer and Manoj Abhi Singer for joining us. Uh, the coach for the South Asia Games, swimming coach, the head coach actually, and Irishan Rajasing, who is a national athlete who has brought glory to our country. I thank you both for taking the time to invest in this program and to give this sort of message to the people that are at home who may have been confused with where they should be heading given, the, given their careers in sporting. Uh, I thank our viewers for joining us. This has been Jen XYZ. Join us again next week as we bring another topic where people who are within this pandemic, who are trying to live with this virus, who are trying to understand how they should continue their lives are now looking for a message. We'll bring that message to you. We'll be Gen X Y Z stay with us again and thank you, Tanasa. Have a great day.